Hello everyone, and welcome to another Monster Hunter Rule video. This is the Game Economist, and today I'll be sharing with you my tier list for the top five bows. So the bows as a weapon class are in a pretty good spot right now. Every time a new difficult monster comes out, it seems like we see the bows competing to have the fastest speed run out of all the weapon classes, and it's not unusual to only see the heavy bow guns giving them a real competition for the fastest run. I'm sure this has something to do with the bows dealing damage similar to the glutton heavy bow gun using their spread shot but also being able to quickly switch to high damage at long range with normal shots is a consistent kind of output that very few weapons in the game can accomplish. I really feel like it has something to do with the ability to reach a monster's weak spots from a long distance, and I think that's what gives these ranged weapons the edge over melee weapons in Monster Hunter World, though the release of the Draken Armor has probably helped make that gap a little closer. On the other hand, a lot of players still don't have the Azura Armor set, which is used in building the critical element skill for bows, so it may be the case that the bows will hold onto their rating as a weapon class for a while, which is why I've been wanting to make a meaningful top 5 video for them for some time. Now, before we begin with the tier list, I want to kind of unpack what a tier list means to me, like how I interpret it, and what kind of criteria I'm using to judge the weapons. I've been playing Monster Hunter World for about 1600 hours, and what I've realized is that the game pretty exclusively favors high damage, meaning the best weapons in the game, they're not uh, necessarily about utility or crowd control, and they're especially not about how good the weapon looks. I mean, anyone telling you a weapon deserves to be on a top five list just because they like the way it looks and they suspect its appearance will make it popular, they're giving you bad advice. The number one attribute that we are looking for is pure damage. The faster you kill a monster, the less time it has to attack you. And it's also the case that you keep the monster juggled by knocking it over using damage, as well as causing it to stagger and breaking its parts, which also causes it to stagger. So when we talk about which bows are best, we should consider mostly how they rank in terms of damage, with only a special consideration for also how accessible some of the bows are, and that's how the tier list has been created. The next thing I want to explain is that the bows are pretty well known for being elemental damage type weapons, and that one bow might only be useful against two or three particular monsters. So one thing you need to take away from this video is that all of these bows are considered the best for their element type. And the order that I place the bows in this list really doesn't matter. There's no real first place or last place on this list. And that's not true for all weapon types, like for example the great swords, who mostly only use raw attack builds because of their slow movement speed. Well, for them, it might as well be a top two list or even a top one list, because with the great swords, that's really all we care about is the great sword with the highest raw damage. Okay, so uh, does that make sense? All right, so now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin. Starting out the list, let's talk about my choice for the best fire bow, the Anja Arch 3. Recently, Anja Arch 3 had some stiff competition with the Terra Thero Fire, so I'll show you the base attributes for both weapons on the screen. You can see just how similar they are to each other, with the major difference being 30% more affinity on the Terra Thero Fire and an extra large decoration slot. However, Anja Arch also comes with 30 more fire damage, and the fire damage isn't locked like it is on Terra Thero Fire, and it gets two extra augmentations. So they're actually very close. I remember thinking Terra Thero Fire was going to definitely replace Anja Arch 3 back when we first heard about it being added, but later on I was talking to some bow speedrunners who told me that they're pretty interchangeable, and the consensus seemed to be split on which bow is better for fire damage. In the end, we'll give Terra Thero Fire an honorable mention, and I'm going to let Anja Arch 3 make the tier list because of how accessible it is to everyone, meaning you can just go build it out of Anjanath parts, whereas the Terra Thero Fire, you really have to get lucky for that to drop from Kul Turoth. So, if you don't have the Terra Thero Fire, you'll want to build Andrew Arch 3 so that you have a strong fire weapon, and you're going to be using this against Kirin and Val Hazak. Alright, 
Next, we're going to talk about the Legia Snow Fletcher. Legia Snow Fletcher is going to be your best option for ice damage. And similar to the Ange Arch 3, it's also a bow where you don't have to earn it from Cold to Roth. You can simply build it. Notice that it has a large ice damage value of 390 and that it comes with the power coating, but also the sleep coating. This is easily the best Legiana weapon in Monster Hunter World, and you'll want to consider bringing it against Stage 4 Cold to Roth, Lunastra, Black Diablos, Diablos, and Odo Garrett. Some of you may have earned the Terrath Arrow Streambow, which is a similar looking Kul Tarath Ice Damage Bow. However, you'll notice that it is missing both the Power Coating and the Sleep Coating. Beyond that, your only other serious Ice Bow option is the Kushala de Aura Bow, but it does significantly less Ice Damage, which with bows we're primarily interested in how much elemental damage we can do with them. Next up on the list, we have the Terrath Arrow Water, which is basically a better version of the Hunter's Proud Bow from the Bone Tree. This bow wasn't actually too important back when I first started working on this list, because you basically only considered using it against Teostro, who you could technically just use the Legiana Bow against, but then Capcom released the Behemoth, which they mentioned was going to be weak to water. However, once Behemoth was released into the game, the Hunter's Notes actually gives Behemoth a 2-star weakness to water and a 3-star weakness to dragon. So back then, I wrongfully decided the Dragon Bone Bow was going to be the best bow to take against Behemoth. And then later I learned that you're going to get better output from a water bow as long as you can land most of your shots on the Behemoth's head. So Capcom wasn't lying to us, but the Hunter Notes are. And, and basically this just means, remember guys, understanding the weapon meta really does come down to knowing what the hit zones on the monster are, and how much damage and what kind of elemental damage those hit zones take. The Hunter's Notes can be very misleading for some uh, unnecessary reason. <laughs> and now we find that the Terra the Arrow Water Bow definitely deserves a spot on the list, not just for being best at water damage, but also for being useful against the Behemoth, who is currently one of the toughest monsters in the game. Next up, we have the Terrath Arrow Thunder, which is going to be the best thunder bow in the game. I actually remember when Monster Hunter World was still very new, and almost everyone seemed to be running around with the Kadachi Strike Bow, which is also a thunder bow that you can build from Toby Kadachi parts. And honestly, it's still a great bow if you can't seem to get Terrath Arrow Thunder to drop. I think it was a popular weapon because everyone back then was farming Nergigante and Legiana, who were both weak to thunder damage. And of course, everyone was trying to unlock Hero Streamstones or Rarity 8 decorations, and those two monsters were especially easy to farm, and they still are, honestly. Though I've really started to prefer Odo Garen to Legiana, I think he's just a little easier. Anyways, Terrath Arrow Thunder is especially useful to have right now for fighting Kolv Tarath. So if this bow happens to drop for you early in the grind against Kolv, then I highly recommend putting together a build and bringing it with you for stages 1, 2, and 3 of the Kolv Tarath Siege. Though technically, uh, stage 1 you can go with like a barrel bomb build or explosive build, a uh, heavy cannon build, and then really just focus 2 and 3 with the thunder. And also if you're, you don't get lucky and this bow doesn't drop for you, you can just build a, a thunder ammo bowgun build. So, But that's, that's a side note, right? Uh, anyways, this is also the best bow for fighting arch-tempered Nergigante, so good luck with trying to get it as one of the relic rewards from the Kolv Tarath Siege. Alright, so now we've covered fire, ice, water, and thunder. That means the only element left to talk about is da -da -da -da, the dragon element. And obviously in this case we're going to have to go with the Dragon Bone 3 for its giant dragon elemental damage value of 420. It also starts off with two small decoration slots, which is very useful for building more affinity. And although it lacks power coatings, it does come with both paralysis and sleep coatings. So between Elder Seal, Paralysis, and Sleep, you're really able to play a crowd control role for your team. The only other Dragon Elemental Damage Bow I would consider right now is the Valhazak Bow, but it's a very different kind of Dragon Elemental Bow, because you're trading off a lot of Dragon Damage for higher Raw and the Power Coating. But in my opinion, if you're looking for more of a raw attack bow with a side of dragon damage, you should just build for normal damage on the villainous brace, the Devil Joe bow, which I suppose we should give an honorable mention to, that and the Black Diablos bow. For normal damage, most of the time you can go villainous brace, but if the monster is completely immune to dragon damage, then you want to swap over to the Diablos bow at that point. I tried a dragon piercer setup with both the villainous brace and the Diablos bow, 
but it was pretty obvious that using a spread shot build with the appropriate elemental type bow is the best way to use the bow class, which is why those two bows didn't really make the list. So getting back on track, your best option for dragon damage as well as crowd control is going to be the dragon bone bow. We should also talk about which monsters are worth bringing this bow against. Like I mentioned earlier, you're actually better off bringing a water bow for fighting behemoth and then aiming your shots for the behemoth's head, right? So the hunter's notes have lied to you about his three star weakness to dragon damage. Another case where the hunter's notes lie to you includes using dragon damage against Val Hazak because even though it says he has a three star weakness, you don't actually deal dragon damage to him until you break one of his parts and then you have to keep shooting that broken part to get the dragon and elemental damage in, so you're just much better off using fire damage against Val Hazak. However, you will want to use the Dragon Bone Bow against the following Rathalos, Azure Rathalos, Pink Rathian, and Devil Joe. There may be a few more monsters on that list, but those are the threat level 2 monsters. I didn't really even look at the threat level 1 monsters because they're all pushovers anyways. As a last tip before I wrap this video up, I want to mention that I've been told the Blast Bows from Lunastra are all terrible so you should save your materials for better Lunastra weapons. I also want to say that I will add meaningful bow related videos, uh, links to the description in the comment section over time, especially since Capcom isn't done supporting the game, and we'll probably see a few more bows crop up that challenge the ones that I've already listed. All right, I wanna thank you all for watching, and I also wanna thank Sho for going over my list of the top five bows, and I'll see you guys next time.